Hey everybody! Welcome back to another episode of Kickstarter Crap. Today we're looking at the Nintendo Switch. So, first of all, the recording came out and the recording fucked up, so this is going to be the second time recording it. So I have seen the trailer for the NX. The NX has now been given an official name of the Switch and I have got Swoop and Midnight in the chat with me that will be commentating in a moment. I'm going to play the trailer now and basically recall my reaction and we'll go from there. So obviously we are starting in a lovely apartment and there is Breath of the Wild playing. Now if you notice he is playing on the Wii U controller then he throws this away for the Switch because fuck the Wii U! Don't give a shit about the Wii U. Get that shit out of here. I need to... Yeah, the dog's barking. It's time to switch from the Wii U. So he's like, fuck that. Give me this thing. So, as always, it's a little black box. And as confirmed by the rumours, it is indeed a hybrid system. So you can play it on the TV. Or you can take the TV screen wherever you go. And it's about the size of a game here. So it is a hybrid system. Uh, looks alright, I do see a little bit of a frame rate stutter there. But now we start to get the ridiculous part. So it is cartridge based, as confirmed, or less cartridge, more SD cards. And uh, this is where it starts to get stupid. Because you can play it on the plane, but you can take the controllers out to play Skyrim, so it kind of confirms Skyrim HDs there. And you use them like fucking Wiimotes. Gimmick. Good. And then when he gets home, he plugs it in, and there is a regular controller. I don't know how compatible regular controllers are going to be. I hope they're compatible with every game. But you know there's going to be games like Splatoon that are going to use that shitty touchscreen. But also, you can slide it into a phone, and you can split the controllers into four. And if we look at this, look at that! I'm just going to pause the video. Look at how tiny this fucking controller is. Like, they are struggling to use this thing. I'm going to put on screen right now a physical analogy. I have got in my hands right now, as you can see on the screen, a little Skylander crystal from the Imaginators, because there's an Imaginators review going up. And I am now holding it to the camera with the exact same thumb width as them. Now pressing it. That is tiny. And if we bring a PlayStation 4 controller in, you can see the size difference between those controllers and an actual PlayStation controller. Especially if you're like, your fingers are all cramped up doing this. So, these, these controllers that can split into these tiny ass ones just look stupid and extremely, extremely gimmicky. But we continue on now, and this kind of confirms that King Boo is coming back in the next Mario Kart, so it kind of confirms another Mario Kart to be announced. I mean, you also gotta understand, like, the demographic of what they're making, like, the NX4. Remember, it's a Japanese country. Yeah, well, Asians we're... don't have as big as hands as us Americans, or you're, you, uh, you British people. So, kind of, I mean, come on, they invented smart cars, for Pete's sake. Well, we'll come back to that after the trailer. Well, let's finish off the trailer first. Alrighty. So, uh, then they get these stupid tiny-ass controllers out again to go four-way NBA. So that kind of confirms an NBA game that is coming on. And uh, then we move on to a new controller. I don't know what this is. It's not got the gamepad in it. I guess this is what it's supposed to look like without the screen. And Mario is in Mexico, so clearly this is a sign that Donald Trump wins and deports his ass back across the border. Donald Trump 2016. Yes. And she is uh, very excited to see Mario in Mexico. Well then... Ah, oh, roof party! Roof party! Come bring bring the, the Switch! Bring the... the, the shitty Wii U gimmicky ass gamepad again. Yeah, nice. Don't worry, here you go. Here's a tiny little Asian controller. You can play Mario with me. And then, of course, the one which um, people are looking at the most is 
Splatoon 2, potentially. It is kind of confirmed to be Splatoon 2 from uh, what we see when we get to the eSports arena, because Splatoon is totally an eSport. Because so. a game about little lolly squid people eating each other is really about uh, competitiveness. Yeah. So, we pick it up, and as you can see, the Inklings have got different hairstyles. This one's got a, a comb over going on. This guy's got it tied back into a scrunchy bundle. We've obviously got the two originals. Then on this team, we've got the Hipster, because of course Nintendo was going to have a fucking Hipster. The one that look, kind of looks like Sombra with the stupid comb over and then bald on one side. Skinhead and short tentacles. No Octolings. It's a nice to see Nintendo didn't listen there. And that is not going to be an arena for Splatoon. Stop try stop living in a fantasy world, Nintendo. And that is the Nintendo Switch. Now, there's some things that you definitely might have noticed during that entire little video. That A. There was no new game shown. We got one single frame of a couple of new games that are teased. And B, the biggest main thing about the NX, there was no system specs nor price points. So if you actually wanted to know how much this thing was in case you wanted to pre-order it or if you wanted to buy it, well, they ain't going to tell you the price. And as for the specs, is it 720p, 1080p? Nobody fucking knows because they're not going to tell you those things because they're the things that will probably destroy the console. However, there are... On Amazon, yeah. they have said the specs. Yes, but Amazon can say whatever it likes. This was the same fucking website that said Mighty Number no. 9 was coming out in November. Yeah, that definitely happened, didn't it? No, it didn't. So, ignoring Amazon, NW Player has uh, cracked into some dev kit thing somewhere. And this is the dev kit specs that you're seeing on screen right now. I'll actually maximize this so we can see the full dev kit spec. So, remember, whatever this says, this is a dev kit. This is designed to test and or break games to a certain degree. So, whatever the specs come out for for the Nintendo Switch, and I'm just going to call it the NX for the rest of this thing, it's not going to be as strong as this. So, you know, it's saying that it's got a uh, 1 gigahertz processor. Yeah, well, that's a dev kit. That's not a real thing. So how big is it really? So, uh, going from the, the dev kit specs, it looks okay. You know, it's got all the things that you'd expect to see in a console of this caliber, you know, uh, main memory is a little bit small, you know, four gigabytes of memory isn't that big. Bandwidth is pretty good, the VRAM shared, that's alright. System memory, actual capacity 32 gig, again, that is pretty pathetic. Like, m even the PlayStation has a 64 gigabyte memory, so I'm not exactly liking that. Uh, transfer rate of 400 megabytes, that's fine. USB 1, 2, and 3.0, that's fine. 60 frames per second, um, or 30 frames at the 4K resolution. I highly doubt it's going to do 4K from what we saw. Well, at least it can do 60 frames at 1080p, so that's fine. And the screens are this big. So it's, it's overall an average console. Which is to be expected from Nintendo, since Nintendo's philosophy has always been good games with weather technology. They've never been ones to uh, go ahead of the spectrum and be ones to uh, innovate. Well, no, they've never been ones to follow. They've always been ones to, let's see what we can do. They're like, um, uh, they're like the American Restoration guys. Let's see this, this old stuff. Let's see if we can make it good. Yes, but they, they can't be behind. They needed to at least rival the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. And while it rivals it in some aspects, there are some aspects where it fails. So And, and even if it does rival it, like, that's kind of pointless because then that same year, the PS4 Pro and the Project Scorpio are going to be out as well. So at that point, when you're trying to compete with the um, PS4... It's like saying that, that that you're late to the race. 
Yeah. Nintendo if, Switch, baby. If only we had a Wada. But, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> but to me, yeah. it's it's not what it's cracked up to be. Like, I, I've already said that the controller is ridiculously gimmicky. And considering Nintendo needed to just play it safe, they, they haven't... I don't think this system is going to do as good as they hope. It certainly looks like it's going to improve on the Wii U, but it's still got gimmicky-ass touch screen in the middle of the controller. It's still got those tiny-ass microcontrollers. It's just not what... It's just too gimmicky. It's just not what people wanted. People just wanted a normal fucking console. But the thing is, at that point, if you want a normal console, then why not just get a uh, PlayStation or an Xbox? Like, I'm a, I am love Nintendo, but I don't even know if I'm going to get Nintendo Switch because I invested a one gig... Um, not one One terabyte uh, memory into my Wii U and the 200 gigabyte microSD card in my new 3DS. So, like, money... <laughs> Yeah. I'll, like, if you really wanted to buy a new system, that should be something for, like... Like, if you want a normal system, go get go to the other companies. This company isn't about normal. This company is about trying things that are new. Whether or not they end up good, well, it's, it's, a, they, it, it's a price they pay. But you can at least say... It's kind of like modern art. Sometimes it's good, and sometimes you're like, what the fuck are you thinking? Yes, but doing something new will end will end them in getting the uh, getting the shaft and becoming third party. Maybe they may become a third party, but I mean, imagine playing like a Mario or Pokemon game in like 4K, 60 frames per second. I could imagine it, but here's the problem: they're going to bank on it so hard that they're going to the 3DS will become like the Vita. That it's, they're never going to make another portable after it? Well, why why do we need to? We've already got a portable console in the NX. Yeah. Nintendo Switch. Well, like, Nintendo Switch off the TV and go outside. <laughs> and that's, that's what concerns me. They're just going to outright ditch the 3DS now. I mean, maybe. There still is a 3D aspect that nobody uses, but they're still going to advertise it. I mean, I don't know, like, it's too gimmicky for me, it's just way, I want to make sure, I'm not going to say anything yet, because I want to see Nintendo say with their own mouth the real specs and not just trust Amazon that can't be trusted half the time, and I want to know the price, because if this thing is above $300, it's gonna, it's gonna bomb. 599 US dollars. 599 US dollars. No, we're not even making the joke. It's like, if... Because the, the PlayStation is 300. The Xbox One is 350. The Wii U is 300, and the Wii U fucked up. This is better than the Wii U, but it still needs to compete in terms of price. So, if they make this thing 400, 450 because of all those moving parts, which cost a lot more money... You might get away with 350, but anything above 350, you're going to, you're going to fail. You're going to fuck it up. Also, what made, um, I actually learned this by watching the uh, Awada Did You Know Gaming, but apparently, like, what made the Wii very successful was its budget pricing and its appeal to like everyone besides just the main gaming demographic. If they can go back to those roots and not be like, hey guys, look. We got main games on this, and it's like maybe if they maybe if they like branch out and not just create like shovelware, but actually create things that bring people together. Like, we sports was a simple game, brought many people together. We sports resort, not really. We sports club, what's that? True. So, if they could maybe price the NX, I mean the Switch, in a way. Just call it the that, NX for the rest of this. It's the last time you're gonna be calling it that. Yeah. Um, am I still on video? Yeah. Alrighty. Yeah. Um, 
they should budget price it. They should price it for um because right now in the economic state that we're in, and no matter you know who wins the election, fucking our economy still gonna be shit by the time that it comes out. So, um, they should price it for people who are living on a budget. That way, anyone can buy it, and you'll have a broader audience. That's how the Wii succeeded. The Wii U didn't succeed because they had shitty marketing. Parents were like, Wii U, what's that? Just to add on to the Wii, like the Sega CD, to the Sega Genesis? Like, no no one really knew yeah. what the Wii U was. Some parents still don't even know, probably. So, yeah, just Nintendo, price it for a budget pricing and make games for I'm looking the ca- well I'll make more games for like the casual people and that can be played in groups and that's fun also I'm looking at the controller now when the, someone's taking a picture of this which is Nvidia I'm looking at the controller right now when the screen is not in it and it looks like a big fucking brick and it looks stupid just like when you split it up yeah, I, th- I think that it looks kind of weird, but the thing is that it's kind of weird that I like. Like, it's something that I haven't seen before, and yeah, maybe it's not the most practical thing, but I'm always amused by Nintendo's uh, creativity, per se. Yeah, but why not just have a normal controller, then bring out all your dongles and your motion controls and shit after the normal controller? <laughs> dongles. Because you know like but, that second version of Splatoon, Splatoon 2 or Splatoon or whatever the hell they're gonna call it, you know it's gonna be like Splatoon where you've gotta watch the TV and look at the gamepad for the map so you're not gonna be able to use this controller you're gonna need that touch screen inside of it to see the map. Maybe unless they've learned <laughs> unless there's like a mini map on the screen itself which, you know, just put it in, like, the top right or top bottom... The bottom left corner or something. Just just do it like Call of Duty or Halo does it. Simple. Simple and it works. Yeah, it's the Nintendo and the Call of Duty so works. small. They look so freaking small. What did you say, Midnight? Controller, the controllers that detach look so small. They are small. Why, Desuka? Again, uh, uh, my whole hand would seriously just cover that whole thing. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> because it's uh, a gimmicky ass fucking controller again. Well, Nintendo. It's Kimishima now. I really wish Zotaro Wada, we can just, you know, like, put some bolts in his head and just kind of, like, chalk some lighting him in and just go, It's alive! And let's bring him back. Because well, yeah, he's the one... Uh, there's no D-pad on here as well. I just realized that. Well, it's got those off fucking buttons. Also, yeah. why is the control sticks one up and one down? You because literally game. did that for your bloody logo. You know why? Because... Yeah. The GameCube, because a lot of people complained that, oh, how am I supposed to do smash attacks on the, uh, let's say there's a smash on the Wii, uh, not the Wii, or the, uh, the NX. Let's say, it's like, people were like, oh, on the Wii U, on the gamepad, why, why can't it just be like the GameCube controller where I can reach down and flick it for a smash attack? So people, Nintendo was like, ah, okay, I see the problem here. Just this guy ripped it out, just put it on the bottom there. There you go. Just started replacing an arm with a leg. It looks, it just looks terrible to me. I mean, I did Color Splash, and then you seemingly enjoyed it somewhat. <laughs> somewhat. Somewhat, but I mean, Color Splash was free. This is going to be 300 potentially $400. Well, you we can only hope, like I said, budget, casual. That's the one with the Wii. That's what's going to win with the... I just don't uh, get and, uh, why they have to make a stupid controller every time. It seems like PlayStation and Xbox are the only ones that understand that people just want to press buttons. 
I mean, oh, 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 oh wait, I just realized the the this uh these face buttons or or whatever or whatever the directional things is, that's exactly from the N64. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and the N64 cool. controller was really well designed. Yeah, man. Don't you remember when you had three hands? Yeah, definitely. You remember? I remember. Well, I mean, like, my strategy, because I, I'm a big Alien fan, like, I held the two the two furthest sticks, and the little baby alien that was bursting out of his chest, he got to play with the middle stick. <laughs> Aliens, Colonial Marines, <laughs> on, uh, on Switch confirmed. <laughs> I mean, that would just kill the system before it even gets started. Give them a fair chance. Uh, but yeah, yeah. To, to me, like, oh, I'm going to wrap this up because I think we've been going for half an hour anyway, 20 minutes. I'm going to wrap this up. To me, it's had the No Man's Sky problem. It was way too hyped for way too long. And now the final thing has come out. I'm not impressed. And one closing note I'm going to say about, you know, because I saw it Splatoon 2. Nikki, leave. The code alone. Let us discover shit. She won't do that. I know, but I want to discover. I already made a video on this, and I'm I'm kind of pissed off her about leaking all the sun and moon shit. Well, you know, if info's out there, they'll find it. They'll leak it. It's not fair, but what are we gonna do? You know, you know, it's not just her, right? Now I've got nothing to look. Now I've got nothing to look forward to in Sun and Moon. I already know no. everything that's going to happen. I know that, Midnight. I'm not talking about Sun and Moon. I'm talking about Splatoon. Because Splatoon, like, she was the major, like, person. Like, she was the one that created the Octo Hacks and all that. It was fun, yes. But it's like, there was no surprise. I was surprised by nothing. Like, all the weapons were out. And people say, oh, well, you can just avoid spoilers by not going online. We live in a digital age. There's not a day, a moment, a minute where not one of us is online and put that info out there. You know, curiosity kills the cat. It's not only that, because it's like with Sun and Moon. It spread like wildfire. Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Tumblr, Instagram. Sooner or later, you're going to see one stray thumbnail, one stray picture, one stray tweet, and it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Now, first of all, Midnight, yes, it is Nikki's fault on Pokemon Sun and Moon because she had a hand in it because she says she got into it first. Uh, I mean, if, if you want me to be, like, more, uh, I guess, truthful about it, she, she has, like, a, a team of hackers that she actually works with. Yes, but she got into it first because she said, I'm in, and then she give it to everybody else. So she, she's the fucking ringmaster. Uh, yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, I mean, there are others that are better than her. I mean, like, like, I'm not gonna completely put the blame on her. Like, Giant it's, yes. like, yes, it's her fault for fucking spoiling it, but it's also Nintendo's fault for leaving it in. Because they have this same situation with Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire got cracked to shit and everyone knew what was in it. Now, nobody cared because everybody's already played Ruby and Sapphire and there wasn't that much new except for, like, the primal Groudon and Kyogre. There wasn't that much new, but Sun and Moon was a new game with a new Pokedex and Ultra Beasts and all like this shit. There was shit that was going to be new and was going to be a surprise. Yeah, but that's kind of like blaming the victim for, like, the crime of the suspect. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it, that's like saying, well, that's like saying, well, I stole from her because, you know, she had a purse just right there. Well, why not just not steal in the first place? Mm. Like, telling me that you you cannot control your humanly urges to reveal something to the world? Probably not. And you know, I would have been fine if the if like Nintendo had left one or two leaks in, like the final starters. I I was going to pick because I don't particularly like any of the the Pokemon or the the start Pokemon. Yeah. 
I was going to that, that, that he she mermaid. Yeah, I was going to pick based on what the final evolution was. You know, if it was the leaks, you know, the Chinese ones, yes, I would have picked the the he she mermaid. If it wasn't true and it was something else, then I would have made my choice based on that. Because to me, like, okay, Poplio looks maybe all right, but all three of the the baby stars kind of look shit. So, you know, if Nintendo had just left in the final starter evolutions, that's it, just to confirm whether those Chinese leaks of the Hishi Mermaid was right or not, that's fine, but it's like, nah, we left in the entire Pokedex and the Ultra Beast and the Z-Moves and everything else. And it's like, oh, yeah. I mean, why, why? It's a demo. Why, why was this just not specifically made as its own thing? Why is all of the data in that demo? Costs, money, time. Fuck off. Nintendo has got more money than sense and has got more time than sense. I mean, if you're talking money-wise, they have plenty of sense. <laughs> Yeah. That's what I said, they've got more money than sense. Yeah. Well, you think we should call this, uh, call yeah. this video, uh, done? Considering yeah. it's been like, what, half an hour? Yeah. I was say, I'm not going, I'm not going to fully rail on this thing till I actually see official specs confirmed by Nintendo at a direct. And some actual games rather than those five second cutscenes. I'm not going to rail on it till I see the actual price, but to me, first and foremost, it was overhyped like No Man's Sky, and all that hype has backfired because I'm. It's just like, oh, all those months of keeping people in the dark, all those months of silencing interviewers for this. Well then, it's like when you go like to a strip club and you and you have a girl with like a really nice body but like a bag over her head and it's like you know you get, get a good lap dance and she takes a bag off she's ugly it's like well shit you had me all this time waiting and it's just you reveal that yeah pretty God much damn. and then obviously Can't... the other thing and then obviously the other thing to me is it's it's gimmicky as fuck it's, it's more gimmicky than the Wii U with this whole fucking splitting controllers and touch screens in the controllers and it comes into this little square box bullshit. So, to well, me, you know, overhyped... A gimmick to be, like, unique. Like, if there was no such thing as gimmicks, like, there'd be no such thing as, un like, unique. Everything would be uniform without gig uh, gimmicks. No one. You can make things without gimmicks. Well, like, wouldn't you call, like, going from, like, New Super Mario Bros. U, New Super Mario Bros. Wii U, like, wouldn't you call the acorn suit a gimmick? Because it's just, it, here's the placeholder item. It's a gimmick. No, but I mean like... Okay, how can I explain it? You can have a gimmick in a game, like, oh, like, you know, like Spyro. Oh, well, there's these gates that allow you to get superpowers. So you've got Superfly or Supercharge or Superfire. That's a gimmick, but that's just a, a little thing in the game. It's It's not anything crazy it's just a, a little button that you touch and you get super fly for 10 seconds here it's the main fucking thing that you hold in your hands and have to spin around and de reattach and disattach to make shit work and you know that that fucking tv screen in the console is a touch screen as well so they're gonna be like oh it's gonna be like color splash you better touch the fucking gamepad to make gameplay happen gamepad just like touch me senpai you haven't touched me in days yeah so overhyped and way too gimmicky for me so yeah. do, you, do you do like do you do like a sign up what i will but i'm gonna hear your thoughts to me it's overhyped and way too gimmicky midnight uh i, I mean i'm actually kind of excited for it because uh, um, because I really do like Nintendo, and I think this idea with the whole uh, take a, a really high definition game with you anywhere you want, I think that's a cool concept. Yeah, a concept was done by the PS Vita. 
Yeah, I was going to say that's been done by the Vita, and look how well that turned out. Uh, well, the Vita wasn't really marketed that well. Neither is this. They kept everybody in the dark till the very last minute, and they've not given you specs, price point, or anything. They're just like, oh, here it is. It reattaches and deattaches. My, my theory on how they could sell well, do like... Like, there's a certain way to market things that makes them seem more desirable than they really are. Like, take fast food, for example. Like, people don't, you don't really want to buy, like, that McDonald's cheeseburger. But, like, you're hungry, and the commercial is on just the right time. They just gotta, they gotta create good commercials. I mean, I saw some Splatoon commercials for the Wii U, and they were good commercials. But they were too little, too late. You're a kid now. You're a squid now. <laughs> you're a squid now. You're just... A horrible abomination of the two. <laughs> you're like the you're like the, the the kid body, but like the squid head. In that roomy. Yes. But it, it just to sum it up, Nintendo work with the gimmicks, like make make it sellable, budget priced, casual games. You're gonna win the mass. You may not like with casual games. You may not win the hardcore fans, but that was not like what the we won over. We didn't win over the people who were there for like, oh boy, Smash Bros. Melee, man, Wave Shine, Wave Shine. Oh. Oh. But the GameCube didn't win over hardcore fans. But it was a great system, and it actually had a controller that was designed to be held by real hands. Well, that's kind of how I viewed the Wii U. Is that the Wii U is not gonna be. <laughs> Like, the GameCube was not successful either. Like, neither of them were, the Wii U or the GameCube. And I think, like, later on, the Wii U is going to be known to have some classics. Yeah. Uh. Maybe. But, again, just to reiterate, budget price, casual games, make the gimmicks work in a way that's not inconvenient. I mean, Boom. I just wouldn't want the gimmicks in the first place. Yeah, got to put on a show, man. It's not, either the, not you really. got to put on, or the people walk out of your concert. Well, PlayStation can put on a show, and they've got a normal ass controller. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's that's the wrap up, everybody. Normally I'd do a nice intro, but I, I'm not too impressed. Again, I'll wait to see all of the information when they do a full-on direct on this thing. But for now, uh, I'll end with a more cynical intro of saying that's going to do it for this episode of Kickstarter Crap. Because it's, it's gimmicky. So join me next time when I whack off Waluigi. Wah!